Hi, I'm Mike, and this is Northeast Wyoming. You wouldn't believe it to look at it, but Northeast Wyoming is full of the Great Plains. We've got majestic mountains, horse devil's tower. What else do we got? Oh yeah, farmland, ranches, as far as the eye can see. But one thing that Northeast Wyoming and especially Campbell County where I live is really known for are coal mines. Just a few feet below the soil is thousands of metric tons of coal. One of the largest coal deposits in the United States. But today we're not taking a look at that. We're looking at a whole different kind of mining. We're looking at Bitcoin mining in Northeast Wyoming. Today we're standing here with my friend Ty, who's a native to Northeast Wyoming. Are you from Northeast Wyoming? I'm actually from Billings, but oh, I've been okay. here for close enough. Yeah. yeah, I call it. You know, it's 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 a it's a small community. It is. Um, Ty is a big part of the green tech Bitcoin mining that's happening here in Northeast Wyoming, and and I know I didn't I didn't prep you on this, but Bitcoin mining is moving into Wyoming, um, yeah. and a lot of other states aren't allowing it, but here it's kind of something that's that's getting ready to take off, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, Wyoming has been very um, proactive at passing a lot of laws in regards to Bitcoin, and, and they've invited uh, Bitcoin miners to come and use the uh, abundant excess energy that we have that otherwise might be wasted. Right, so those coal mines are obviously supplying coal to power plants, mm -hmm. and then that power being used locally here is actually a big boom for them as well. Yeah, I mean, you know, the further you send it away from uh, this region, the more you lose. And so if you can consume that energy here, it, uh, it helps generate revenue for our local economy. You know, it's just good for the economy. It keeps them going, it keeps us going here in Northeast Wyoming. It's good for everybody all the way around. Yeah. So Bitcoin can be a little confusing, and I've done some research, I've looked into it, but we're gonna let somebody who knows a whole lot more about Bitcoin explain exactly what Bitcoin is. When money is easy to make, society begins to break. So how do we make money that's easy to carry but hard to create? Well, one solution is Bitcoin. Back in 2008, I became fed up with government money, with the corruption, the manipulation, so I created a digital currency. Digital money that can be sent directly from one person to another without any bank or government involved. And the best part? It's hard money. It's the hardest money ever invented! Bitcoin is very hard to make more of. Each new coin gets added to the supply only after a computer works very hard to solve a math problem, where there's no shortcut and solving it costs a lot of energy and time. Okay, but if it's on a computer, can't I just copy and paste? <laughs> Not with Bitcoin. You see, there's a public record of every Bitcoin ever created. It's called the blockchain. It's like a puzzle, and each Bitcoin has its own unique shape. And because everyone has a copy of the public record, if someone tries to fake a Bitcoin, it won't fit the puzzle, and will be rejected by the network before anyone can use it. That's why Bitcoin is so safe from criminals and the government. <laughs> you said criminals twice. And unlike dollars, which can be printed endlessly, there will only ever be 21 million Bitcoin. It's almost impossible to inflate. The only way to get it is to earn it or buy it from someone who has. Aha! No offense, but if you control Bitcoin, couldn't you manipulate it just like the government? I don't control it. No one person does. It's controlled by a public network of Bitcoin users that anyone can join. So if someone wanted to change something in Bitcoin's code, they would need to get the majority of the millions of Bitcoin users to agree to it. Or the change doesn't happen. And when has the majority of us agreed on anything? One black toilet paper is garbage! Touché. Wow, I didn't know made-up money could make so much sense. Today, millions of people send Bitcoin instantly and cheaply to each other around the world without any bank or government involved. And because Bitcoin is hard money you can't just print more of, the more people who use it, the more valuable it becomes. Emily, if we take Lyle's Bitcoin, we could be rich! I could pay for college entirely! You could outsource your movie and pay to have your name in the credits. <laughs> Slow down. I'm not saying that Bitcoin will make you rich quick, or even at all. Right now, only about 1% of the world owns Bitcoin. And because it's still being adopted, some days it goes up and even down. 
Also, investments, though potentially lucrative, can be risky. Only, Only invest, invest what you're, you're willing, willing to lose. lose. We no. know. Wow, I think I get it. Good money should be easy to use, but hard to create. And because Bitcoin is digital, it's fast and cheap to use. And the blockchain makes it hard to inflate. Thanks, Mr. Satoshi. What? Mr. Satoshi? He's gone? Or was he ever even here? All right, Ty, so we are standing in a Bitcoin mining facility, right? Basically a connex from the outside, but inside there's a lot of stuff going on. Uh, Green Tech, nice enough to, to let us, your employer, let us come in here and take a look around and film. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's really cool stuff happening here, but where does it actually start? So, um, you know, we got our <laughs> You're looking our around like, where do we start? Our miners are in the tank right here. Okay. And if you can see, each one of these is an individual computer, and each one of those computers has three of these computer boards. And then on this computer board, there are 126 chips. Okay. And they're all sitting there uh, putting in a guess to the lottery. And that lottery is minting that next block. Mm -hmm. And so that takes a lot of energy, and that energy is what is securing the network. This is pretty cool. Like Ty said, these things are, are drawing a lot of power. Um, and there's one there. We were just inside that one. And then we're going to go take a look at another one that's over on that side. But one of the really nice things about these is they tend to put them right next to substations. And that's because of the amount of power that they're pulling. Um, they need that kind of power. So that's actually pretty cool. They can put them right next to these substations and they're, they're rock and rolling ready to go. Um, obviously, transformers, everything else involved. This is one of the big coolers here um, to cool down that, that mineral oil, I think. <laughs> I'll make sure of that before I put this video on. But uh, it's actually a pretty cool process, and it could be the future of Wyoming. Like I said, we're going to talk about that a little bit later. Um, we're getting ready to fire these things up. We're going to start them all up uh, here in just a little bit, but we got a little bit more to talk to Ty about inside. So this is a big radiator. Yep. Basically. This heat that comes through here, now you were explaining to me earlier, like the, the mineral oil in here heats up, goes over here. What, what kind of temperatures are we looking at? So we can deliver uh, out to the heat exchanger or possibly a greenhouse or some other need of heat, uh, 60 to 70 degrees Celsius, which would be 140 to 158 degrees. So that's uh, quite a bit of heat that could be used for growing uh, different agricultural products. And, right. and that's kind of what I would hope to do so sometime soon. We're gonna get more into the, uh, I guess you could call it a byproduct of Bitcoin yeah. um, that can actually help out ranchers, farmers, uh, ag agricultural producers here in just a second. But first let's take a look at, at how this whole thing works. So this, this, is the, this is the brains of everything. So yep. is this a computer itself that's so controlling everything else? So this is the PLC okay. and it is controlling all the functions uh, that turn the miners on and, and make sure that they don't get overheated. Gotcha. And so through the heat exchanger, you got hot oil coming in and going into the bottom of the tank where it flows through the tank and then it comes out and goes through the heat exchanger again and that's one loop the second loop you got glycol going outside to a, a big radiator outside and flowing through the other side of the heat exchanger it's designed so that you could tap into that hot glycol and run a hot water line into a dry cooler in in a greenhouse or some sort of radiant heat very cool and this isn't the only one of these connexes out here, right? I mean, there's more than no. one that are all working together to, to produce Bitcoin. A big question that I've gotten here in the past is, how long does it take to produce one Bitcoin in a, in a system like this? So this system here altogether, you know, it might produce, you know, it's kind of like asking a rancher how many cows they... I know, <laughs> but, I've heard that before too, but... But just just give me a, I mean, even just a really two, rough estimate. Maybe two to three Bitcoin uh, per month. Okay. And uh, so, and it just, there's a lot of variables that are in there and it depends 
on how many miners in the world are out there. So the total hash rate. Oh, so it's a it's a percentage anyway. Yeah. So you, you got the more there is, the less. The more you can competition mine. there is in the world, the less uh, revenue there is because it all gets split up pretty evenly. Take a look through this Connex. We're going to see uh, the computers that are that are submerged in the mineral oil, and mm -hmm. that's to keep them cool at because they're obviously they're they're creating heat. Do they make a lot of noise when you turn them on? Uh, not not if they don't have the fans on them. Oh, gotcha. And so the fans are, that's one reason that we do immersion cooling, is that it's not as noisy. All right, so kind of tell us what we're looking at here, Ty. We took a peek in here earlier, but these are the computers. Yep. Um, submerged in the mineral oil. Oh, yeah, that's mineral oil. Yep. Yeah, that's, that's, uh, that's some slippery stuff. Same thing you put down a cow's yep. throat yep. when they're bloated. Exactly. So um, each one of these tanks is holding... 30 Bitcoin miners and uh, there's eight tanks in total in here okay and for a total of 240 um, they each consume about three four four hundred watts or four thousand watts um, so this container right here is close to one megawatt worth of power Wow so the interesting thing that is different about Bitcoin than any other kind of data server is that you can shut these off at a moment's notice and it would not affect the network at all. Okay. So um, as a demand response to grid balancing, you know, if, if, if the power that we're consuming here is needed somewhere and, and it can get to it, we can shut off. I gotcha. And so that's how we hope to help uh, balance the uh, energy grid and, and keep customers from having reliable power. All right, so we are now walking across the facility. We were just inside that Connex. Is it okay to call them a Connex? Yeah. I mean, they're, they're specifically manufactured for Bitcoin mining, correct? Right, they're modified and built by, uh, by the producer and, and yeah, they're just a Connex that's been modified. Gotcha. Now we're coming over here to another building. This one looks a lot different. Yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a little bigger. This one consumes uh, three megawatts, so it holds 576 machines. Okay. And so... Um, when, you say, when you say like three megawatts, yeah. is that per day, per, per uh, month? They're megawatt hours. Oh, okay. And, and so just to give you a reference, like the city of Gillette runs on about 30 to 35 megawatts on average, I would okay. guess. So just between these ones, I mean, you're using a, a good percentage of the power that's actually used in the entire county. Right. Yeah, that, that's really cool. So it's a, it's a lot of power. So we're heading inside this other one. Now this is a lot louder. Yeah, so right now this is uh, our air conditioner and just to keep the electronics cool, Okay. Um, there's a lot of air movement in here. Gotcha. So, Right, but uh, just a little different uh, layout. Uh, each one of these tanks holds 48 miners instead okay. of uh, 30, and uh, it's got what's called a smart PDU. So it tells me uh, energy consumption of each miner individually, and I can turn on and turn off the power through my computer to each individual computer. I'd hate to see your power bill. Yeah. So Ty went to grab his computer. We're coming up uh, at the top of the hour. We're going to kick all of these computers on. Um, unfortunately, there's not like, you know, any random Bitcoin laying around that I can pick up and, and uh, slip in my pocket and sneak on out of here. But this is pretty cool. This is uh, obviously a, a pretty big operation as far as Bitcoin goes. I'm sure there's bigger. But this, you know, for Northeast Wyoming, uh, a new industry and something that could change the face of Wyoming. This is pretty cool stuff. Uh, ties back, don't tell them I was trying to steal Bitcoin. We're set for the top of the hour to kick. Is that like something that normally happens? Is this something like a timing type um, of deal? Yeah, usually we try to um, start them after the hour because the way the power blocks work are in 15 minute increments. Okay. And so, you know, if we're curtailing, we want to be, uh, starting right at the new start of a new window. Gotcha. So they don't run 24-7? Um, th we would like to run them 24-7, but uh, you know, when we, when we accidentally are on during that peak, peak demand period, 
then it really affects our energy bill. Oh yeah, because there's a, an extra charge for being on during the peak demand time. Gotcha. I'm just gonna hit resume mining and uh, they're, they're gonna start, really. So yep. is there any way to tell that they're running bubbles or anything else, nothing, huh? I can watch the temperature start rising right oh, here. Oh, okay. And so I'll get the uh, southern one started. Once booted up, you'll start seeing temperatures climbing. So if I was just going to look at like box two here, mm -hmm. which is which one? Do you mean? That would be that bottom left one. Okay. And we can just um, watch the temperature start to rise on that. Well, it doesn't take long for those temperatures to start to rise. Already up a whole degree Celsius after just a minute. Yeah. Once uh, once. Once they really start uh, hashing, mm -hmm. you'll see you'll see it in the oil. It looks like the barbecue, you know, when the, the heat right. waves. Well, I can see bubbles. There's bubbles coming up. Yep. Yeah, you'll get some bubbles. But yeah, you can start to see them hashing there. Interesting. So we're making money. Slowly. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Temperatures on the rise, 30, we're hitting 40 degrees Celsius, which I look at your little chart here, and it's already up to 104 degrees. So that's pretty cool. Um, really quick, Ty, uh, before we and let everybody go, um, we were talking a little bit about the byproducts of right. Bitcoin, and I know you have some really cool ideas. Yeah. And to, to, how, to how to actually let farmers and ranchers benefit from Bitcoin mining. Well, you know, uh, one of the things that you can do with these is water cool them instead of immersion cooled or air cooled. And so with water cooled, you can pump that water into your radiant floor heating or into a coil in your furnace or into your, a coil in your stock tank. And you can use that byproduct of heat to uh, keep the things warm on the ranch that normally uh, you would have to have a lot of expense to pay and you could be paid to heat your stock tank or your shop or whatever. It's right, even like you were talking about greenhouses. Greenhouses. So you could pump, pump it in there. Yep. How, how far does it travel? I mean, does something have to be right next to this to actually take advantage of the heat? They tell us that they can pump this heat up to two miles. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. So, you know, you put it underground in an insulated pipe and, um, you know, you can pump it quite a ways. Very cool. I hear a weird noise. Oh, that's the uh, the VFD for the dry cooler. It's just oh, kicked on. it's starting we to kick on because we're getting warm we're enough. Getting up to the set point, and uh, so yeah, it's so it's time to start and... cooling things down. Yep, that's awesome. Uh, as we get ready to wrap things up, I've got one big question for you. What do what do you see? Uh, you know, obviously we we have a few of these around town, but the the future is you know unlimited as far as Bitcoin or Bitcoin miners, yeah. the byproducts and all that kind of stuff. If you if it was if you could do what you wanted to do, what would the future of this industry look like to you? You know, I would love to see it uh, get more decentralized and uh, into people's homes and get people running their own servers in their homes and using that heat to. Uh, save them uh, money and yeah create their own money printer right um, you know as our dollar and national debt goes up and our value of our dollar goes down Bitcoin's limited supply is uh, how it's mathematically designed to go up in value right it's so, kind of like you know when we were on the gold standard yeah and you had you had gold and you knew that was worth money because other people agreed it was worth money. That's right. gold or diamonds or whatever. I mean, you can look at whatever it is, but mm -hmm. with Bitcoin, it's it's secure yep. because people secure it themselves. Right. It makes total and sense. So one of the main things is that you can hold your private keys when you when you own Bitcoin. All you have to have is your uh, essentially a password and, uh, and that, that's what gives you access to your Bitcoin. As wow. long as you can get to a computer, and have your password, you can get to your Bitcoin. And so I think eventually it could be possible that we could see uh, real estate and that kind of stuff being inscribed into the Bitcoin ledger. Mm -hmm. And since it's a globally recognized uh, permanent ledger that can't be hacked, then uh, you know it could end the need for war. And, you know, wow. if you think about it deep like that, it's like, we, we were always fighting over this territories. And uh, 
You know, if we had a form of communication that says, you know, who owns what, then, you know, that's all there is to it. Mm -hmm. Wow, you're really optimistic about it, man, but I totally get it. One other question I got to ask before I, before I let you go. Do you get paid in Bitcoin? Um, I, I have the option. Okay. I do have cool. the option. Very cool. Yep. Probably a good option to take some point. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, definitely. Well, Ty, thank you very much. I yep. appreciate you letting us come out and take no a problem. look at this. This is, uh, you know, not very many people get to actually see this stuff and how it works from the inside. And we hear about it all the time. Mm -hmm. It's hard to understand. Right. But it's one of those things, if you can get on it now. Yep. Because if you would have bought Bitcoin 20 years ago, wow. you'd be a multimillionaire right now. Yeah. 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 You know, Take the time, invest the time. They say it takes a hundred hours of studying to really start to start to grasp it. Right. So, you know, the sooner you take the time to learn about what it is, um, I think the better off we are. Well, very cool. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. Yep. Uh, we've got more stuff coming up. Obviously, we're going to take some trips. We're going to be back out with Ty here in a little bit. We're going to take a little bit of a different spin around things, but I want you to subscribe, follow along. It's going to be a lot of fun as we continue right here on Beyond the Ranch. Thanks, guys, for hanging out with us. Ty, say bye. See you guys. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> All right, just for a really quick uh, different look at things, I'm going to zoom in here a little bit. That is actually a coal mine right over there, uh, probably about, I don't know, half a mile away or so. And right here behind me, Bitcoin mine. Right down there is Ty. <laughs> <laughs> and the substation.